Hi guys, welcome. Today I'm going to explain object-oriented programming to you, a concept that you've been using from the day that you learned Python. If you don't know what exactly OOP is, you're like a driver who doesn't have a driving license. I'll explain objects, classes, and four pillars of OOP, abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. By the end of this video, you get the driving license. Let's get started. Well, what's an object? Everything is an object. Your keyboard is an object, your mouse, your mom, your dad, your dog, your cat, your pants, your hat, everything. Even things that we can't see are objects, like an appointment schedule or a premise. Each object has some attributes or properties or features and some functionality. Let's go back to your mom and dad object. What's their attributes, their features? Well, they have hands, legs, heart, nose. They may be kind or angry generally. These are their attributes and properties. What about their functionality? They can walk, they can breathe. They produce you, they probably made money for you, fed you, and raised you. Instead, what's your attributes? You're just like them. You have legs, hands, etc. And what functionalities? You probably sleep a lot, eat a lot, and waste a lot of money. That's what most of the parents think of their kids. Now let's get to programming world. An integer is an object. For example, variable v is a reference to an integer object. A function is an object that does something for us. A string, and also a list, are objects. Generally, objects store and process some data. Now that we know what do we mean by an object, let's see the first key concept of object-oriented programming. Abstraction. When we drive a car, we don't care how its engine or differential or gearbox works. We've just learned how to drive it. We use the pedals, steering wheel, and shifter or gear lever. So we apply this concept to programming too. When we use modules, we don't care how it works. We just know how to work with it. We give it some input and get an expected output. For example, we import TKinger, we create a window by creating an instance of TK class, then set its geometry, and finally, we call the main loop method. And this gives us an empty window. Just like driving, we push the gas pedal, and the car goes forward. And we don't know how it happens under the hood. And this is abstraction, which means simplifying the task and also hiding some data. Object-oriented programming is applying real-world rules to programming. How can we achieve it? By using classes. Classes are objects that we create and give them attributes and functionalities. A class represents a real-world object created and configured by us. We create a class by writing class keyword, followed by its name, which is better to be uppercase. I want to create a car. Let's give it some attributes. This car has four doors, four tires, a V4 engine, and five seats. It can move and park. Let's create a car object and store it in car underscore one variable. This is called instantiating. We can instantiate a class many times that we want, and we don't need to write the code for all of them. We write it once and use it many times. That's one of the great features of classes, reusability. Now that we created an instance, we can call its methods and attributes. Function and classes are called methods. Now let's create another instance of car and assert in car underscore two. And when I call park method of car underscore two, Parking gets printed. This is possible because of these selves. Did you notice that we didn't pass self when calling methods? Well, because Python does it itself. Self is a placeholder for different instances of the class. Let's remove selves and run the program. Look at the error. Car that move takes zero arguments, but one was given. We have written car underscore one dot move in the line 14, but error says car that move in the line 14. As I said, self is the placeholder for the object name. When we say car underscore one that move, Python converts it to car that move and passes the instance name to the method. In this case, car underscore one. So the first argument of class method is the placeholder of the instance. That's how we can create different instances. Python keeps track of their states with self. Cool thing to mention is that self is not a keyword. It can be anything, but it's an agreement between Python programmers to use self. Well, this car class is just a specific car with specific attributes. What if we want a car with our own taste, our own specifications? For that, we call the constructor guy to construct our desired car. And it is a special method, which is our constructor or initializer. Well, we tell him what we want. For example, doors, tires, engine, and seats. I'm sure that some of you have seen other programmers do this. And you're like, what the hell is going on, dude? To clarify it, let's change the names. Provided doors, tires, engine, and seats are the material, the attributes, that we provide for constructor, and he stores those materials that we provide in his storages, which all have self. So self.doors, 
tires, engine, and seat are classes attributes or storage of materials or values that you provide. And the scope of these self attributes are global, which means we can use them in all the functions of the class. How do you provide them? When we create an instance of the class, constructor, the init method is automatically called. When I run the program without providing values that constructor wants, we get an error. So let's provide the materials that constructor wants. First attribute is self. We don't have anything to do with self when creating instances. Python does it. So first one is provided doors. I want four doors, four tires obviously, a V6 engine, and five seats. And now program works fine. But let's see if constructor got our order. Let's create a method named info to print the information out. I create another instance of car with different values, two doors, four tires, V8 engine, and two seats. Before running the program, I put an empty print between two cars so we have a clear console. As you see, we have two instances of the class with two completely different values and specs. How does Python keep track of different instances? As I said, when we create an instance, Python puts the name that we give to the instance in place of all selves. So car underscore one becomes this behind the scene, and car underscore two becomes this behind the scene. And when we call methods of each instance, Python converts car underscore one dot info to car dot info and passes car underscore one to info which is the self that we have passed to the info method in the class. Same happens to car underscore two and all other instances. I hope you've understood how self works. This leads us to the second key concept of object-oriented programming, encapsulation. Whenever we want, we can call the methods and attributes of the class. This can cause wreckage and error. We always want to have some privacy and limit users' access to the classes and program. We make our attributes private by putting a double underscore before their name. Let's make doors a private attribute. When user wants to access doors, program says, what the hell are you talking about? What doors? We don't have such a thing. This is called encapsulation. Abstraction and encapsulation interfere in some areas like privacy and removing the complexity. Next concept is inheritance, which means deriving classes from other classes. Let's create a class named sport car. And we pass car class to the sport car and we pass the class. Now if you create a sport car, I should provide values for it just like the car class. And then I can call its methods. How does it possible? Well, we pass car to our sport car class. That means the sport car class inherits from the car class and has the all methods and attributes of car class. This prevents rewriting code and makes the process of creating easier. Car is the parent or superclass, and sport car is child or subclass. So a sport car is a car, but of course, a sport car has different options. For example, I want to specify the gearbox type beside all the options that the parent car class has. So when I want to call the constructor of a sport class, my text editor is smart enough to do the job for me. We initialize all the attributes of parent class and also call the super.init and pass the attributes to the superclass. So we initialize the superclass by calling super.init. This is the default state of constructor of a subclass. What if you want to have more options? For example, I want to specify the gearbox type beside all the options that the parent car class has. This brings us to the last key concept, polymorphism. Polymorphism literally means having different forms and shapes. Let's first initialize gearbox. We add gearbox and still have all other options because we call the constructor of the superclass. Let's create info method just like the parent and call info method of superclass. This means I want all of these and I don't want to write them all over again. But we also want one thing more, the gearbox information. Let's see what happens. My car has two doors, four tires, a V8 engine, two seats, and moreover, a manual gearbox, because I'm a real driver. My car can move, and we didn't create move method. We get it from the superclass. And it can park. These are all inheritance. Sport car inherits from the car class. When I call info, we have all the information plus gearbox information. And my friends, this is called polymorphism. We can either change the method of the parent class or extend it. Basically, info method has a different form or shape in the subclass compared to the superclass. Also, we can extend the class with new methods. A sport car can drift. While a normal car can't, because it hasn't such a method.
Let's recap. In object-oriented programming, we try to apply real-world relations and rules to programming. Everything is an object in real world. Each object has some attributes and functionality. In programming, objects store and process data. We create objects by creating classes in programming. Classes are a bunch of attributes and functions together. Classes are like a blueprint that we can use to create a lot of instances of that object and give us reusability. Abstraction means simplifying and hiding the process and make it modular. Encapsulation means hiding data and have privacy to prevent leakage and errors. Inheritance means classes can derive from other classes and inherit their attributes and methods. Polymorphism means changing or extending attributes and functions of parent class by subclasses. That's it guys, I really put effort in it and tried to make it as simple as possible. Please give me a thumb up, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more cool stuff. Take care, see you later.